Welcome back class. We're here for another you know literature class today. Now we finished up chapter one and two for my father, son, son Johnson. So now we have to move on to chapter three and four. I've been doing the chapters in groups because instead of doing 12 chapters by itself, I rather group them and then break up characters, themes, and settings and attack it from that angle. Now we went through characters and setting in the last two chapters, right? And rather than just talking about the setting over and over again, what I will actually look at is how the setting has affected the plot itself or affected the story and moved the story forward, all right? So the first thing we're going to do, like we've been doing, is reread the summaries of the chapters. So here's a summary for chapter three and four. In chapter three, Rami and Sonson are visited by their neighbors, Donnery Hilcher and Betty Hilcher. They take food as a sign as well, as a sign of welcome, and Father talks to Mrs. Hilcher and shows her around. Donnery and Rami are left alone and also have their own conversation, so they're getting to know each other. Rami and Sonson walk the ladies home, where they share a nightcap, which is just a drink, then return home. Rami could not sleep, so he thought of Donnery and was able to sleep after that. So chapter three is called Neighbors, and what we'll find happening here with chapter three is after being kicked out of the home that they want to live in, after now being treated poorly by their peers, they are now finding comfort in their neighbors who are now their new close friends. So this is a source of happiness where where they are has made them outcasts and they found someone that lives close to them that can make them feel comfortable. Chapter four. Chapter four has a real interesting title. It's called Growing. Now, that, that title is actually kind of a pun because one is talking about farm life growing, but it's also talking about sun sun growing as a person. All right. The summary for chapter four goes as such. Sonson's farm was very prosperous and people began visiting it in order to purchase goods. Sonson was stern with his bargaining at first, but then he went back to his old ways of giving away his goods. Rami confronted him about it and told him that, and told him that the same people who were begging him were buying from Jake. Sonson decided to change his ways. He brought home a puppy for Rami, which he called Max. Donnery and Rami became good friends who spent time together, and the farm was extremely prosperous. Sonson and Rami decided that they had to take the produce to market, despite the fact that Rami did not want his father to sell in the market. They decided to sell some goat kids as well. They had a wonderful dinner at the Hilcher's house, where Betty volunteers to sell at the market for Sonson. Sonson was not pleased, but agreed to this. Then they went home. Now... As I said, it's a very interesting title because it shows the growth of Sonson. It shows him becoming a better businessman, becoming more, how would we say, productive and less weak. You know, he's becoming stronger as a person. So just like how the farm, the farm produce is growing, Sonson himself is growing. And we find that that is what the writer is trying to show us. He's trying to show that during these tribulations, Sun Sun is actually growing in, in, in personality, growing as a person, becoming a better person, despite all of the problems. In fact, you could even say that these problems is what fueled him to become stronger. Now, our main, our main focus for this class is the setting. And what we have to look at is how the setting has changed. Now, for example, while he was at Robin Hill, Sonson wasn't as productive, but now that he has moved to River Bottom, I feel like the location, the setting of where he is, is what's making him even stronger as a farmer, and it's attracting people here. So it becomes a source of strength for him, where when we thought he was being moved to a lower class, he's now becoming a better farmer since moving to River Bottom. And even though he's there, there are certain ways that we see that his location has helped to push him to be a better person. 
Now, in chapter 3, we're going to go through quotes now like we always do. In chapter 3, Neighbors, I want us to listen to how the writer describes things. How he gets into showing us things rather than just telling us. Rather than just saying, this happened, that happened, they went here, they went here. He's showing us through his descriptive techniques. The night rolled in thinly from the hills, but it was hardly night at all, for it was one of those dry, moonlighty nights when you can sit on your doorstep and see plainly, even see a white screech owl fly past, bridging the valley from mountain to mountain, and watch clouds scudding by the moon, obscuring it for a moment, but only just for a moment, when treetops are edged with the gold of the light, and you look at everything through a veil of gold, and even a dog's back means a halo. Now, what I really like about these descriptions of the setting is that as soon as you read it, you're transported there. And he doesn't just talk about the visual look of the setting. He talks about the feeling of it, right? So he's talking about how the night took its time to come, but it's still, the moonlight was so bright, it almost was as if it barely turned to night. You understand? Um, the screech of the owl, the bark of the dog. So now we're hearing things. You understand? Um, and it has a way of putting us in that place, right? And that's very important for us to understand what it felt like being here, what it felt like being out into what seemed to be the woods, right? And after being there, you're able to now feel how Sunson and Rami feel. That even though it felt like darkness, so this is where it becomes like a metaphor, that even though this was a dark time in their life, you had to see the light that was there, you know, and that moonlight is representing how River Bottom has become somewhat of a shining light in this dark moment in their life. The next quotation. All right. This is still in chapter three. And in this quotation, you know, they're still getting to know the neighbors. They were ready to go, speaking of um, the Hilchers. We saw, the, we saw them to the veranda, then to the steps, and we got to our gate down the hill. And, <clears throat> and what with Father Hemming and Hoyne, we got, we got to the bridge, merely at a footbridge narrow, just for two people walking abreast. Here we pause, listening to the water rip past the stones, the water dark in places, but rushing silver, in other <clears throat> rushing silver in others where the moon kissed it something dunked in a frog maybe happy too and celebrating celebrating the grandiose night in a dive mrs hilcher's farm came down to the water dropping off sharply to dip into the river as we chatted the crickets at various distances punctuated our conversation and there again went that screech of graceful in flight now, again, it's the same use of visuals, um, visual imagery and auditory imagery. So these are literary devices that you have to get used to, the use of different types of imagery. You know, we spoke about that when we did um, poetry, but you have to look on tactile. Um, I'm surprised that he didn't actually add something where they touched the water to kind of get a little bit of touch in tune with the feeling, with, um, with the imagery of sight and with also the use of auditory right so we're able to hear what is happening there and then we kind of want to celebrate it it's not dark and scary it's more calm and relaxing you know so the water rushing over the stones is more relaxing rather than it is scary moving on to a quote from chapter four now which i think is a very good description because what's happening now is he's about to describe the farm and this also puts us into that type of atmosphere which is now about to be their lives this is oh i remember chapter four is called growing our vegetable garden was something to be talked about giant cabbage leaves ribbed and green and folding into solid balls Leafy callaloo, tomatoes already outstanding and still filling out. Okras like grounded daggers. Bananas had burst from the ground 
and with such healthy sheathed leaves. Road as they were, the pineapples looked pretty. I kept five goats, two mothers and three kids, and father had Lizette, the mule and the horse. Marvel. Now, there's a, there's a sort of, aggression is one of the words I'm thinking, but there's a sort of um, strength that is being put into this description where I think Palmer, which is the author, I think Palmer is trying to get us to see the type of intenseness that is happening in this garden. It's not just a bunch of, you know, vegetables all over the place. This is something strong that they're about to take into the market and take over. You know, they're about to really outsell other farmers. You know, so things are, okras are being compared to daggers, um, the giant cabbage leaves. You know, tomatoes are seen as outstanding. The bananas burst, you know. So these are some really aggressive words that are kind of used to show that this is something strong that is happening. This is not no small garden. This is not no soft garden. This is something tough. This is something that's going to really push them forward. Now, the next quote, which I think is the last quote for the chapter, right? Next quote, another short one. It says, by now our farm was bursting at the seams. Notice bursting again. Bursting at the seams with garden produce, cabbage, tomatoes, callaloo, scallion, okras. It was too much for village consumption, and they were haggling too much anyway, or asking for credit to which father had put a stop, to which father had put a stop. We had to seek an outside market, and I nudged father about it. Now, this is a sign of success. They have worked so hard that not only the people near them can't finish what they have, they have to go to market and sell. So they have to go to an outside market. And this is really good success for Sonson Johnson, who was very giving, who was very laid back. Now he's become more forthright and really productive in what he's doing with his life and i think this is a very very important turning point for sunson hence why the chapter is also called growing where sunson is now growing into a proper businessman not just a guy who farms but a successful farmer and i think a lot of this has to do with the push that rami gives and the support that he has gotten from the hilchers so this is something that we have to look at going forward and think about all right now, that is chapter 3 and 4, which is the setting. Our next class, let me just double check it here to just make sure I get it right. Our next class is going to be about characters. And what I will do is still focus on chapter 3 and 4, and I will focus on the two new characters that have now come into the novel for us to kind of look at the impact that they're having on their lives. You know, we, we see Rami, Jake, and Sansa, we spoke about them. We mentioned Arlene, Brad, and Ma, but I think right now we want to really focus on the neighbors, the new people that come in our life, and how these characters, which come out of the new setting that they're in, which is River Bottom, how they affect the plot, how they affect themes, how they are going to help to move the story forward. All right, so please read up chapter three and four, and I'll see you next class.